today is Canada's Day. Okay, not really. It's like a couple weeks away from Canada's Day, and that's just because, you know, that's how you film and do shit. Canada! Anyways, that being said, I wanted to get at the head of the game, and I knew the best way to celebrate Canada's Day would be to eat 15,000 calories of foods created by a Canadian. Eat with me. What's happening guys? So, I'm gonna set up a timer. Right now it's about 6.20 a.m. I'm giving myself 24 hours to eat this 15,000 calories. And this is how I'm gonna start it. This is about 5,000, so I've kind of broken it down. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. So 5,000 for breakfast, 5,000 for lunch, 5,000 for dinner, and uh, 24 hours to, to make it happen. It's gonna be my first 15,000 calorie challenge. I feel like you're not a YouTube eater until you've done something like this. And I haven't, so I gotta do it. We're starting off with the classics. I got half a dozen donuts from Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons since 1964. Fun fact, butter tarts, forgot. I think that was like the 1900s, something like that. Smoked salmon on a Montreal style bagel. Um, peanut butter was also invented in Canada. Obviously maple syrup, coffee crisp, anybody. This is just the delicious chocolate bar. And then these guys right here are hard, hard to pronounce. They're Nanimo bars. Nanimo. 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 Bars. Those are delicious too. They're from a city called Nanimo. Nanimo. And then of course, also salt and vinegar flavored potato chips. I might get to this, I might not, if I need like a little bit of a salt. I also have some Timbits hidden back here that I'm also gonna eat. A Timbit is like what some Americans would call like a donut hole. I think Dunkin' Donuts calls them donut holes. We call them Timbits. Because our place is called Tim Hortons. And they're little bits. What was? I got 24 hours to hit 15,000 calories of food created in Canada. Eat with me. All right, I think I'm gonna start off sweet, and I'm gonna start off with something. I know this is my favorite. This was definitely my favorite. All right, so this is Tim Hortons take on who uses pieces. Oh my god, this was so good. Best way to start off 15,000 calories. Right. So you got chocolate on the top but they glaze peanut butter all around the top. So even where the chocolate is, there's peanut butter under it. So I've tried this one before. This is New York cheesecake. I remember when I ate it, it was kinda late in the game. Do a dozen donuts. And by that point, flavor fatigue starts to kill it. I'm gonna try it now. This one, I think, is their strawberry confetti. So, I think it was like last year, Tim Hortons came out with these things called Dream Donuts. And the last two I ate before were all Dream Donuts. Let's see how this goes. Mm. Mm. Kind of almost has that like birthday cake taste. Like I can have like one of these before you're like, mm. <laughs> mm. my tried and true Boston cream. So this used to be my favorite donut of all time, at least at the mornings. And then I had the, the Reese's Pieces one. Game changer. All right, so I'm gonna get it to one of these butter tarts. Mm. 
still have. I went to like a local bake, local baker shop. It's okay. Now I'm gonna get one with a pecan. It's more of like American style. With the pecan pie. But I know I like the crunch better. This has like an interesting flavor, like the fat. Like if the woman was like, I make this with lard or something savory, I would have been surprised. It's like, it's not, it's not bad. I'm just kind of not expecting, like I was expecting like a little bit more sweet. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna get into this animal brush. It's not a knife, that's a spoon. So there's a city in British Columbia, pronounced. All right, listen. I'm not trying to poke one of the city, I just really don't know how to pronounce it. Nanimal, nanimal, It's like a layered chocolate and I don't know, I'm gonna find out real soon. It's all right. It's actually not bad. I was kind of afraid it was gonna be like, Really, really, really sweet. Oh, wow. Somebody could confirm peanut butter was actually made. Invented, sorry, in Canada. I mean, I'm just listening to Wikipedia. Can't even remember where it was like originally made from. Oh, what better way to incorporate peanut butter? That's good. <laughs> Ten minutes in, I think I'm gonna go get a little savory in me. We got a classic smoked salmon on a Montreal style bagel, cream cheese. Capers, red onions, this is classic. <laughs> Bread's a little stale and hard, I bought this yesterday. Tried to reheat it, it's like impossible. Ratio of cream cheese. Well done. Well done. Oh god, stale bagel. Ah. Let's get back into the donuts. Oh yes, strawberry filled. I feel like it was more powdery when I was younger. You saw it first. A little concoction. Strawberry peanut butter. Filled donut. Come on, Tim Burns. This is just like an old fashioned vanilla dip. It might be like strawberry dip. I mean, it looks like a Tim, um, it looks like a Homer Simpson donut. Mojo. <laughs> Half a dozen donuts done. A little flag. Get into my Timbits. I think I want maple syrup on that one. Believe me, I highly considered just chugging maple syrup today. But then I was like, I mean, that would be cool to watch. Look what I've been missing out on. Oh. That was a hookup. 
That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Add that bad boy in there. And then we can pull some of these out. So Miss Vicky's is a Canadian company. I didn't know that. So yeah, apparently it was a Canadian who created the salt and vinegar flavor. There you go, Wikipedia. Okay, so a Timbit. A lot of Americans. A donut hole. Sprinkles. long enough to get into the, the legs cross they'll seam look baby <laughs> you know 22 minutes in for sure 5,000 calories down. This wasn't included in my lunch, or this was included in my lunch. This is how I would eat breakfast, except I forgot one thing. So if you are going like, yo, where is your female bacon for breakfast? The place I got, some stuff I got today, they had this like female egg sandwich and I forgot to order it. And I had both my girls and they had ice cream in their hand. And when I remembered, I was halfway home. Anyways, I have to be a little bit quiet, so I'll be a little bit more energetic. <laughs> Not that you need me to be energetic, I'm just trying to tell you why I'm eating so much so, but you know this food. Well, also I'm kind of more quiet now, because I'm super calm, like, and clearly I'm rambling. I'll be back for lunch. See you soon. Round two, fight. Let's eat. All right, so this is the one I was definitely looking forward to. Okay, so first of all, look at the time. It's been just under six hours since I started. So since I ate breakfast, it started around like 6.20. Now it's 12.05. Who invented the California sushi roll? This Japanese born chef, resident of Vancouver, claimed he created the California roll. So that's why you see a whole bunch of California rolls right there, because I'm fully aware the Japanese created sushi. Who invented the dynamite sushi roll? It is believed the origin of the dynamite roll was found in Octopus Garden in Vancouver, British Columbia by, referred, by a man referred to as Sari Sam. That's why you see a dynamite roll, that's why you see a California roll, and that's why this stays in the Canadian feed. But of course, that's the pista resistance, man. Montreal, Quebec, they contributed the most to our lovely country with poutines, smoked meat. There was another one that was a big heavy hitter. I can't remember. BC and Quebec, you guys, really, we owe you the most, because I mean, I don't even know what really Toronto or Ontario has ever given you guys, us. All right, so first I'm gonna dive into the poutine because it is probably hot. Hopefully it won't burn my tongue. Let's eat this bad boy. I supported local. I was gonna make my own. But I was like, it's a local burger joint, poutine joint. He's a little dog. Or in this case, needs a little bit more cheese. Because I'm sure if you put that couple extra curds of cheese, nobody's gonna like come back and be like, yo, you put too much cheese in my poutine. They're gonna be like, sorry, sir. You know, you just wanted to order a french fries. Comment below if you put anything on your poutine other than the gravy. I mean like ketchup and hot sauce or something like that. But I like it classic. And sometimes if I'm really meathead, I'll put some bunch of y'all smoked meat on it. Delicious. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Good, good, I think we get into a little bit of this sushi. Yeah. <laughs> 
the interest of hunger, I'm not gonna go get that. Cause there's just like enough of me, enough lazy of me, that we'll probably use a safe chopstick. And not go get another one. In the interest of time, hunger. My hand is probably being cleaner than that chopstick that's now on the floor. Here's a random fun fact that I learned researching some stuff from Canadian Foods. I was looking for poutine from New York Fries because I heard their poutine is like killer and I heard their fries is obviously killer. New York Fries isn't even a, like American based company. It's actually Canadian based sandwich. I fell in love with these my first trip to Montreal. Shout out to um, Schwartz. Oh, is not busy. Food is going very well right now <laughs> during lockdown. Poutine first. So it wasn't sandwich first. <laughs> uh. Boom. Later. Alright, so <laughs> I 
feel less full than I did the last time. Even though the last time was like a couple months ago, for some reason, I still remember feeling way more after. <laughs> that doesn't mean this is not gonna hurt. I still feel like this is doable. And actually, if you look at that time, and for any of you mathematicians out there, you'll know that if I eat this within the next hour and 17 minutes and 30 seconds, I've actually completed 15,000 calories in 15 hours, which was the name of my video a couple months ago, which is right over there, uh, which I failed. And this time I'll actually succeed. So first, I just want to succeed. So even if I don't make it in the 15 hours, cool. That being said, it would be kind of cool if I redeemed that challenge. Um, okay, so let's start off with what we're eating here. So in a city in Ontario, so finally something great in Ontario, Chatham, Chatham, hopefully I'm pronouncing that city right, um, a pizza joint from a Greek Canadian guy created the Hawaiian. That's a fun fact. The Hawaiian was created in Canada. I mean, I'm sure then many Hawaiians are like, why is that called Hawaiian pizza? Because we don't eat those things on our pizza. Maybe that's what you guys are saying. A Greek guy created a Hawaiian pizza in Canada. Let's eat. <laughs> oh man, it's like fresh out of the oven. Because I want to enjoy this. And I was going for top of the mouth. That's good. Like great crunch and the crust. That's certainly a winner. So obviously, ham, pineapple. Anybody else who loves Hawaiian pizzas, let me know in the comments. There's not a lot of toppings I don't like. I just love eating everything. Obviously, gonna get off with all this crust. I just have a plan for that later. All right, let's get into some of this deep and delicious. Didn't know this was Canadian. If you're not Canadian, if you bought like a family bucket from KFC, did you get a McCain's deep and delicious in your order? Because if you didn't, we led completely different lives, and this just affirms that this is like synonymous to just Canadian. The only time I think about this, this, this specific cake is whenever I had a family bucket at KFC. So if you're Canadian right now, you were like, yes, 100%. Just like the nuclear green coleslaw, just like the macaroni salad. If that wasn't there, it'd be like, I'm not having KFC, mom. This is a delicious cake. Let's just be honest. All right? It's not like sickeningly sweet, or at least it's not sickeningly sweet right now. a good job I enjoy to do, which is not a lot of people, but I enjoy it up in the middle of the ground. So, I didn't look in the origins of the tiger tail, I just saw it was created in the uh, I just saw I was created in Canada, so I don't know where in Canada it's made. Um, PC is a Canadian company, ice cream base made with 100% Canadian milk. So I'm very tired. <laughs> Resource. Like, I saw some cool facts too. I should have probably said this when I had clarity. Anyways, 
I think Canada supplies 75% of Western worldwide, and we supply 75% of the global population of maple syrup. The maple syrup makes it nice. The mustard. So, tiger tail. <laughs> True story. The only time I've ever had tiger tail, I was probably like three, maybe four years old. And it's one of my very first memories. So there was this ice cream shop at a mall near me called Laura Secord. You go to Laura Secord as a kid and you see this. And you see the name and you're like, I want that. Now, I don't know why some the thing that occurred occurred. But I had my tiger tail and my memory was being upstairs and barfing and my dad just like losing it because of one, you know, this is orange and it's like obviously they're all up yes now clean up on the carpet. And also back then in the 90s, <laughs> when you throw up on a carpet, you don't have like as many products. For like today, it's like, hey, just spray this, this magic spray and everything just disappears, parents. Okay, so anyways, this is orange flavored, um, which I actually really like orange flavored anything. I'm really bad. Um, I just read this now. It's, it's combined with black licorice. Orange ice cream with a black licorice flavored rip. I mean, it works for me. This is like a dream flavor. I love orange ice cream. I love black licorice. I could see why a three-year-old me would throw up on. I feel like these three bags of chips and my coffee crisp are like my entourage. <laughs> they just, I feel like they've been with me in every single, was it, were they in the breakfast this morning? Mm. No, I bought the salt and vinegar. That's right, I had the salt and vinegar for breakfast. Chewed on it a little bit. Got really full for lunch, and now same kind of thing. Well, three-year-old me <laughs> threw this up on carpet. 33-year-old me might very well do the exact same thing. This is just not working. All right, maybe I need like, a change up right now. Let's get my bread out of here. I don't think I can do this. I thought this was good. I always love it that the thing I the thing I think that's gonna help me in a challenge ends up being a hindrance. I mean I didn't know Tiger Tail was orange flavored with black licorice. And frankly, when I'm not full and flavor fatigue, it probably does taste phenomenal. Doesn't right now though. I'm scared of that all of it. <laughs> I think it's just really ironic that it was the only ice cream I can remember ever throwing up. Now it might be the second. Alright, these flavors, ketchup chips, all dressed, salt and vinegar, apparently are synonymously, well not synonymous, they were synonymous, some of them were synonymously only in Canada, and now they're like, you know, over in the States, these flavors were created in this lovely country. Ooh. Mm. That plant is not going very well. The water doesn't make it go down any faster. It only brings out the flavor.
flavor of salt and vinegar, vinegar worse. But you'll probably do the same with those. I hate to do it, because I really thought, I look at this and I'm like, this is all I gotta eat. <laughs> oh. oh man, all the good stuff is done. I'm just gonna eat these little minnows. All right, I'm gonna have to sit back and relax. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this in 15 hours. Oh, but I'll be back. Oh. All right. Yeah. A little good news, bad news. Bad news, I'm not gonna be able to finish Obviously, because you can see, I just missed out on the 15 hour mark. Not a big deal. This is the 1500 calorie in 24 hours. That being said, the good news is, I was looking and calculating these calories and realized I, first of all, didn't add this and also grossly underestimated how many calories it was. Double, <laughs> the double amount of calories. So by just eating this, I don't need to eat those potato chips and the coffee crisp, which I think is actually kind of good. Because one, I don't want to only eat half of this, even though I don't really enjoy it. I know it's gonna be a little easier to finish this than eat those chips and that coffee crisp. You know, anyways. So this is a 15,000 15, calorie. Okay. So the goal is to keep 15,000 calories. And then just go to bed. <laughs> so, I'm going to make that happen later. Finish this. Complete the challenge. Go to bed. Alright. finished the challenge with like, what was it, like 15 minutes left. I just had to be super quiet because my kids were sleeping and I'm about to go wake them up. I just wanted to do the outro of, I did it. I mean, I obviously really um, used every part of the 24 hour rule uh, to finish it. And it was just because I literally had half a container left of the ice cream. And I said to myself, if I do not finish this challenge, and I end it at about 14,000 and change, I would regret it. So just finish the challenge, 
get the 15,000 calories under my belt in 24 hours. And I did. And I oscillated all night, also because my stomach was hurting and I couldn't sleep, uh, tossing and turning. But that being said, like I was like, let's just finish this challenge. And I did. And hooray. So that was the 15,000 calorie challenge of foods invented in Canada. And by the way, this tastes so much better when you don't have flavor fatigue. One cool tip, I woke up this morning and I was 12 pounds heavier than the day prior. <laughs> so um, eating all this food, I mean, I definitely feel it. It definitely uh, added a little bit more on me. Other than that, you know, love you Canada. I mean, nothing against you, Matt Murray. Love you, Wayne Gretzky. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy this. And if you enjoy videos like this, where I eat, you know, 15,000 calories or more in one day, uh, comment below. I definitely had some fun doing it. Uh, less fun near the end. That being said, I did it. So I now officially can say <laughs> I have eaten 15,000 calories in 24 hours. Happy Canada Day. Anyway, it would be Ultra Nerd though, if I remembered the name of all those uh, hobbits and named all those three little bags the hobbits. I mean, all I can know is like Frodo, oh, damn. Sam? The guy who played Rudy? His name's Sam in the movie? I really love Star Wars. What else? What else makes me a nerd? I mean, I really like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't want to say love. Love would mean I even like know shit about it, you know? Oh, I love. Oh, I love Batman. Oh, yeah, that makes me a nerd. That's a selective nerd. I love Batman. I guess deep down, everybody is a selective nerd. Because you can't like everything. Or you can't love everything. I mean, I dislike... What was I just saying here? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, Lord of the Rings. I just don't like it. I don't care for it. You couldn't really get me to watch it. I wouldn't care. You asked me to watch every Star Wars, I'd watch it right now, just for fun. If I didn't have to work, I'd probably just be watching Star Wars. Yeah, 